Hi, I'm Wesley with Tree Newell Certified Arborist. Welcome to another edition of Building Roots. Today, I'm here with Corey Herpel. Corey, today I want to talk about root rot. It can be a big problem on a lot of our urban trees. Uh, the consequences of it can be severe. So it, it's a real issue that people don't really think about a whole lot or understand uh, until it happens to them. So uh, just tell me a little bit about, you know, what root rot is and what it looks like on a tree. Well, the root rots can be really tricky. A lot of times when we get called out, either the tree's already dead from this pathogen or root rot, um, or it's already declining rapidly to where treatments may not even be feasible. Because a lot of times what will happen is this will, it will start infecting or setting into the tree roots long before it's noticeable to the customer. Um, a lot of times it's from being in saturated soil conditions, you know, whether that be over irrigation or irrigating too frequently. Uh, we've seen it even with heavy rainflow events, you know, when, when the ground's saturated, it doesn't matter if it's irrigation or sprinklers, it's still saturated soil. Right. Um, I think that one of the biggest problems with it is that, like you said, it, people don't know it's taken a hold, but it's already there as when the, when the tree's stressed and the conditions are favorable for the disease development is typically when there's not a lot of water demand in the spring. And it's not until later when it starts to get hot that you actually see the symptoms because as those roots decay, the tree's ability to take water is, is going down, mm -hmm. but the tree's water needs are going up and that creates a deficit that causes drought stress. And usually by the time you see those symptoms, it's too late. That's the, the fascinating thing about the root rots to me is essentially the trees are dying of lack of water uptake, but it's from an infection to the roots from being saturated or, you know, previously to where by the time we see it, they're basically dead of drought stress or lack of water, but it's from conditions that could have built up over the previous season, previous couple of years. Right. And when I explain that to customers, it, it, I always tell them that it, it's ironic at the trees dying from drought stress that probably was caused by too much soil moisture. And, and that soil moisture also makes the pathogen more mobile in the soil and makes it more likely to come in contact with the roots of a stressed tree mm -hmm. that's going to make it susceptible. Yeah, and the, you know, some things that, that we can help to try and avoid these are conditional. You know, we want to avoid changing the, the grade of a property to where it's funneling or con concentrating more water in an area that's never had it before. We want to try and avoid compaction, at least under that tree canopy in that critical root zone, um, especially with new construction or modifying a property in any way. And then, you know, proper deep root fertilization will help too, because we're aerating the soil, we're keeping the roots happier, healthier. Um, right. A, a healthy, vigorous tree is going to be a lot more resistant to the pathogen than a tree that's already weakened and stressed. And and so when we see trees that are stressed and weakened and we know we've got favorable conditions, our job is to help improve the vitality and the health of that tree to make it more resistant. Right. And it's, it's always easier to keep a healthy tree healthy and happy than to try and fight it with fungicides and other products to stop the decline and then try and bring it back to overall health. Right. So when you come up on a house and the customer is showing you a tree that looks classic root rot, um, can we, re can we really save that tree? It would depend on the condition of the tree at the time of the consultation or inspection. Um, generally, you know, if it's much past 25, 30% of overall canopy dive back, um, I'm fairly pessimistic with my recommendations. That way the customer has a, uh, a realistic expectation or a, a goal of the treatments. I have saved trees, you know, that are declined down to 50%. Now they don't ever look the same, but we were able to actually save that tree. Right. Uh, another common question I get around it is, is it uh, contagious? Can it pass from tree to tree? And what I usually tell people is that if you've got trees that are infected and you've got other trees in close proximity, 
and you can assume are growing in the same conditions and those roots are all commingled together, there's a good chance that it could spread. I can't guarantee it will or won't, but I think it's a good practice to try to prevent it from happening on other trees because our fungicides work a lot better as a preventative than they do as a curative. Absolutely. And like you said, if, if you get a group of trees and you have one or two that have succumbed to root rot or showing symptoms, well, the other group, the other trees in that group, they're in the same conditions. So we tend a lot of times to focus on keeping the healthy trees healthy. And maybe we do write off the ones that are, you know, either totally dead or very sick. And we just count those as a loss and we focus our efforts on the healthy ones. Right. Um, it, it's difficult to save trees that have these types of uh, root rots that are attacking the the little small fibrous roots that are absorbing all the water and all the nutrients. Um, we've been talking a lot about that, but there's other types of root rots too, types that uh, decay the big structural roots and the, the flare of the tree. Those don't have as profound of an effect in a short period of time. They're more of a long, slow decline that can really destabilize the tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those, those root rots or the basal or butt rots of the tree, those can be critical when we're talking about hazard situations. You know, you get a tree that upheaves and the whole root ball or it breaks at the base. A lot of times those will have those fungal conks on that lower trunk area that, you know, with proper inspection and, and maintenance of that property, maybe they would have caught it before the tree had failed and been able to mitigate prior to that damage. Right, and it can also, um, it can be hard to distinguish between you know, the the biological health of the tree and the structural integrity of the tree aren't always the same. You can have a tree that's really weak, but it's pretty stable in the ground. And then you can have trees that have these buttress decays and they look very healthy and full, but they could fall over at any time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with, you know, when we're talking about on our mature big trees, it, it's always fascinating to me how much of that tree is actually functioning or live material, you know, conductive, moving water up and sugars down. Most of that tree is just dead wood, but dead is not really the right term. It's dead as in non-functioning physiologically, but it is very structural. Yeah, yeah, the hardwood can provide some structural um, integrity to the tree, but most of the most of the strength comes from the living sapwood around the outside, but when those decays get into those uh, major structural roots, then this starts to become a real problem because that's not something that we can really treat. We can't really slow it down once it's inside the tree and it's going to progress. It's a matter of can the tree continue to put on new growth as fast or faster than the decay is taking it out. Yeah, our treatment options on those basal basal rots are basically trying to maintain the overall health and vigor of the tree for as long as possible right. with monitoring for, like you said, um, whether it be spread of around the tree or up the tree, then, you know, the arborist at that time can make the determination, do we need to remove this tree? Right. So with the, with the root rots that are attacking the fibrous roots, what are the main symptoms that people should look for? So you get a a browning, kind of an off color in the canopy. A lot of times it starts in the outer canopy because that's where the water is just not moving out there as efficiently as it should. Um, in the springtime, you can get some tip dieback to where the rest of the tree leaves out, but then you get these weird little dead twigs out on the ends. That's a sign that the overall system is no longer functioning as it should. Sometimes you can get leaf yellowing and leaf drop when the when the uh, stress gets real severe on the tree, uh, signaling that that tree's in drought stress because those are drought stress symptoms. By the time we see those, it's usually too late. Mm -hmm. um, with regard to the the other types of rots that occur on the main structural roots, what do people need to look for? So one of the the most apparent things is actual a fungal conch, uh, basically the mushroom like growth that grows on the the lower area of the tree or maybe on a surface root close to that area of the tree. If you're seeing any of those weird growths or any questions, you need to reach out to an arborist right away and have them examine that tree. Yeah. Sometimes we see them in the fall. That's a, that's a common time for uh, armillarias and ganodermas. But uh, when those 
when those fungal conks show up, it's important that people realize that that's a fruiting body. The fungus is actually in the wood. Mm-hmm. It's it, pulling the the conch off doesn't really do much to the fungus. It's kind of akin to pulling uh, apples off an apple tree, and so it's not really going to negatively impact that disease. Right. Um, basically, we just have to treat the tree for overall health. I usually do recommend pulling the conks off. For one, just to kind of give me a time frame on, you know, is this an old conch? Is it coming back in a month, six months, a year? Until I see that tree for the first time, I really don't know. Yeah. But you're right, it's not really doing anything other than helping me with a time frame. Right. So if you're having problems with root rots on your tree, you're seeing these symptoms, and you need some help, please come see us at treenewel.com or give us a call to set up a consultation with one of our ISA certified architects.